Hello, dear Gemini. Welcome to Divine Debut. This is Kathy speaking. Thank you for being here. This is your July 1st till the 15th, 2019. It's eclipse time, and this is a divine spread that I'm doing for you for the first two weeks of July. Um, only hours away from the um, new moon, solar eclipse in Cancer. And we're having another full moon lunar eclipse in the sign of Capricorn on the 16th of July. So there's a lot of retrogrades going on, dear Gemini, your ruling planet Mercury in about five, six days is turning retrograde. Mercury is in the sign of Leo now, but it's going to go back into Cancer to the last degrees of Cancer where it was. Now there's so much going on in the sign of Cancer and Cancer is the house of home, family, pair, um, I should say mother because it's ruled by the moon. But because it's a new moon, the sun and the moon are there. Venus is ready to leave your sign. So all this eclipse is happening in your second house of self-worth, values, earned income, things that you love, things that are important to you. And the second eclipse will be happening in the sign of Capricorn. And Capricorn is your um, eighth house. It's your eighth house of death and transformation. Pluto is there. Saturn is there. And so is the South Node. So how do you share your intimate moments? How do you share your, you know, your income? How are you sharing your your lives in general, you know? Because the eighth house is very deep where sharing is concerned. That's the house of, you know, we've been married, we're now committed, or even if we haven't been married, we're still living together, sharing everything. It's also the house of other people's money, banks, loans, deeds, the law. Capricorn is also the law. Um, and I do see like Saturn as, you know, the law enforcement. So let's see what's going to happen for you. We've got a few retrograded planets, Pluto in Capricorn, Saturn, which is rules, which rules Capricorn is there, retrograde. Jupiter in its home sign of Sag is retrograde as well in your sixth house. Sorry, in your seventh house of relationships. Relationships or dealings with other people. Any relationships. And we've got Neptune retrograde. And that's in your that's in your ninth house. Ninth house of philosophy. Ninth house is also higher education, spirituality, the vision for the future. But your ninth house is in Pisces. So Pisces is endings, the end of some era, therefore, you know, moving into something new. Now Chiron is in Aries. It's um, healing issues of the past, karmic issues from a previous life, from your childhood. It's like healing thyself, healing the wound. Let's take your cards, dear Gemini, the divine spread I'm doing. Thank you so much for your support. Thank you for being here. You are the last sign I'm doing for the 1st uh, to the 15th of July. So thank you for your patience as well. Let's take the first card. One moment. Okay, um, my computer just said that the disc was almost full and I can't. It's not possible that I keep going and just be talking without the video being recorded. So I'm shuffling again, Gemini, just so you know, on cam. So there's nothing worse than that's happened to me recently. So such a waste of time and energy. So Gemini, let's cut the cards for you again. Let's prepare this for you. Gemini, Archangel Michael, what does Gemini need to know? What do they need to know? around the eclipse time, so 1st to the 15th, 
of July 2019. Let's take the position of your foundation and you have the Queen of Swords. Here you are in the hidden position, Nine of Wands. In the recent position you have the Hanging Man and this is Pisces energy. In the now position we have the Four of Cups. Crowning your reading, Ace of Cups, dear Gemini. Beautiful. This is what's on your mind. This is your highest goal. This is what you want to manifest. A new beginning in emotional matters. Something that's going to make you really happy. Let's take the action and advice for you. And you have the Three of Pentacles. And the outcome position is your card, Gemini. Head over heart decision, major arcana. Let's see planetarily what's happening for you. So what does spirit want you to know? The divine position. That's what this reading is. It's a divine spread. So the divine position for you is the knight of coins. So we've got water, we've got earth. So Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn. We've also got um, Pisces. And Gemini, obviously, this is your energy. Let's look at the bottom of the deck. And you have the Knight of Wands. So you've got the Knight of Pentacles as well as the Knight of Wands. Now, there was another sign, was it Virgo? That had, that had the Knight of Pentacles as well as the Knight of Wands. Don't, don't uh, hold me on that because I can't remember that well. I'm taking taking a Karma Dharma uh, oracle and it's the universal love. So also another message, Karma Dharma position for Gemini spirit, please. Gemini. And the cards are starting to jump. So Gemini, what do they need to know? Please, spirit, Archangel Michael. Gemini. Gemini around this time, July, roughly 1st to the 15th. One card please. What's the message? I think that this is it. Let's see what it is. And we have answered prayer. This is beautiful. For those of you that have been praying for something, the answer is coming through. And this is an angel, as you could see. And I, I've noticed the butterfly here. This is very transformative. Let me read from the booklet for you before I take a tarot of sexual magic for you to look into your love life. Let's read this card. Answered prayer. The universe is listening and has heard your call for help. Your prayer will soon be answered. Expect a pleasant surprise in the coming weeks. The butterfly angel depicted on this card reflects the positive transformation now taking place. She has heard your heartfelt whispers. She knows your dreams, your fears and concerns. She has taken them into herself and changed their shape. The dull has turned to bright. The... The bound has found its wings, a wish becomes a truth. Your question and sorry, you question and now she answers. Listen and allow. She will fill your heart with love, joy, and a reminder that you are never alone. Embrace her with your new wings of light. Her love for you is unconditional and spans all time and space. Gift her your troubles. She delights in their transformation and responds to every heartfelt call. So this is beautiful. This is obviously saying that you are not alone. Dear Gemini, there is. The divine is all around you and your prayers will be answered. Let's take a... a um, Power of sexual magic and I'm using the divine 
the sorry the legacy of the divine tarot in the main spread the rest of the cards you know they're all they've all been named in the description box below so have a look there if you're interested so gemini in love gemini and in love what's happening with gemini and their love life and we've got wow 10 of wands we got two cards Ten of Wands, and you also have the Five, Five of Wands. Why? Well, we go from the Five to the Ten of Wands. So, whatever the case, wherever you've been, like at emotionally, um, with the Five of Wands, this is not such harsh energy in the sense that usually with the Five of Wands in Tarot, it's not being on the same page. Here we've got someone though looking looking to the couple so there is an outsider here someone is um spying spying on you and your partner someone is spying on you this could be someone that is looking you up on social media for instance this is an outsider now we've also got the three of pentacles and i don't like to make all the readings that there is an outsider that there is a love triangle but when you see cards like this, how can you not mention that? So here we've got the Ten of Wands. So this is crazy sex. This is crazy passion. You go straight from the five to the ten. And ten is a completion. Ten of Wands, think about it as desire. Your desires are at the ten mark. You go from five to ten. This is like, check her out. She's sitting like she's holding him, he's holding her up. This is a big hug. This is as though these two people haven't been together and there's so much passion when you come together. This is incredible. It's the If it's been a burden, it's like the tens always break down to the ace. And okay, so let's take an astrology card for you from the Black Moon Astrology cards as well and see what else is happening around your astrology, what energies you're working with, what energies are influencing you. So let's take Gemini. Gemini, Gemini. What does Gemini need to know? Archangel Michael. One card for Gemini. One. No. Not yet. Still going, everyone. <laughs> okay, this card seems to be asking for me to take it. So what is it? We've got Pisces and I believe. You have to believe. Dear Gemini, you have to believe in the power of trusting, trusting your partner, trusting that this is a spiritual connection, this is a very strong bond. And for those of you that are changing the way you are, like some of you may even be changing your religion because Pisces is the last house. Is the 12th house so this could even be saying that you believe that the cycle the karmic cycle let's say the difficulties that you've been going through are coming to an end to a completion and it's a 24 which equals number six and that's the lovers energy here so let's take some more cards but I'm gonna read these first of all let's see what we've got first of all the knight of wands here at the bottom of the deck Sagittarian energy mainly for me, could be any other fire sign, but I see um, Sag here and because this night is always on the move, it's always about travel, right? So nights are all about action. This is quick action. This is the general energy. What's beneath that? Five of Wands again. You've got the Five of Wands twice. Um, fives are all about conflict and you know, an, an imbalance. So their change needs to take place. So obviously change through action. That's what the Knight of Wands 
says to me. Now, Sagittarius speaks of foreign places, cultures, religion, spirituality, and also envisioning the future and envisioning your path forward. Let's take these cards, dear Gemini. This is your energy, obviously, and this is in your foundation. Queen of Swords can be quite cold, very communicative, very communicative. And also she's someone who's very calculated as well. This is in the area of your home. So you are the you are the trunk of the tree, let's say you are the rock. You are what holds up. Um, you are the roots that that are holding up some sort of a situation, a family situation. I feel that your position in the family is very, very important. And people see you as someone who is, you know, very intelligent, yeah, very communicative as well. But maybe not someone that's not that happy could be because the Queen of Swords is not someone that shows her emotions. She's more like someone who is, you know, that she looks at the facts and then she acts. So a force to be reckoned with is the Queen of Swords. Now in the position of what's hidden, Nine of Wands. Nine of Wands is always, you know, having been through a lot but still protecting what you've built. Now this is in the position of what you don't know. So if you are dealing with another fire sign, could be um, Leo, but we've because we've got lots of wands here. We've got Leo Sagittarius, and we've also got um, lots of water. We've also got Earth. Now the position here is the divine position. We've got the Knight of Coins. Now the difference between the Knight of Coins and the Knight of Wands is that the Knight of Coins is usually very slow moving, but here with these two wild horses here, right? And as, as I say, and as I've said in other readings, I see these wild horses as, you know, wanting to have fun, wanting to play, they're brand new, they need to be broken into. So this is like the wild side of the slow nature of this earth element. Now, who are you dealing with? Is it Taurus? Is it Virgo? Um, this is usually the Virgo card for me. Could even be Capricorn. I have to put that in because it's Earth. We've got another Earth energy here, Three of Pentacles. So I see that if if the um, if there had, was been slow pace movement, forward momentum, it's gonna pace. It's gonna get really quick paced. So. That's the difference between the Knight of Wands. The, it's as though they're matching each other, right? In um, in movement, forward momentum. But, you know, this is, of course, this is Earth. And what is quick? Quick is um, the energy of air is very quick movement, movement, as well as fire. So... If you are dealing with another earth sign, they could have strong uh, fire as well as air in their chart. Now, we don't have any swords in this reading, but I am taking more cards apart from your energy, right? That's the only air quality we have here. So what you don't know is around the new moon eclipse, as you can see in the background, you're at the nine. Now, if this is a fire sign that you're dealing with. They've been put through a lot, okay? Mainly because it's in the hidden position, I would say that this is mainly their energy. Now here we've got the hanging man. So again, Piscean energy in the recent past. This is sacrifice. This is changing the way you see things, your perspective. This is like waiting for information, waiting for enlightenment from the divine. This is tough work and this is like, waiting and I know how hard it is for Gemini to wait. In the now position we've got the four of cups and in this deck we've got this cup being airborne. Where is this cup coming from? He's actually staring at it. 
which is different messages through this card. The Four of Cups is usually a card of boredom. Here, there is a lot going on with this cup. It's, it's as though someone is waiting for it. And it's coming from the ethers, coming from above. Right, so it's coming from spirit, obviously, and here it is, it's it's landed. Ace of Cups. This is in the position of your status, your career, um, how people see you in the world, what is your goal, let's say, how you are seen in the world, like where, where are you at? Are you committed and living with someone? Are you single? We've got a new beginning, something that's going to make you very emotionally happy. And this could even be in the area of business, career. This could be an offer. Ace of Cups is always an offer. And it's a godsend, I would say, in this area here. Because it's something that you've been waiting for. Now, if we put these two cup cards together, it's the Five of Cups, which says that you're concentrating on the past and not looking at the future. Right? Being more pessimistic than optimistic. So here we've got the three of coins. This is you working very hard, maybe in a collaboration. Okay, so doing, fine-tuning whatever you're working on. And you're being noticed for your talents here, obviously. This is also, it's got, usually we've got the church in the background. So something to do with working on your spiritual self, your higher self at this time. This is in the action and advice position, right? So three is a number of expansion and growth. And, you know, putting in the hard work, you're going to be noticed. So therefore, this could even be like expanding in the sense that there could be, you know, people that are higher above you in the hierarchy scale, on the hierarchy scale, could be noticing you. So therefore, they could be, you know, giving you a chance. This could be an offer for you to prove yourself, whether this is in business, in love, or even in family. Um, for some reason, I feel as though, I feel as though people already know how powerful you are. This is just another milestone maybe that you are you know trying to accomplish now the outcome card is the lovers and the lovers is a head over heart decision of course it's also you know a mirroring effect of your other half this is the twin flame card okay and this is a relationship that is blessed it is blessed but there are heavy decisions or difficult decisions that need to be made and Gemini's usually more logical thinking instead of looking at what makes their heart happy, what makes them joyous and complete. Now with the North Node being in Cancer, it's saying that you need to love and nurture yourself. If no one else is, you need to do that for yourself. But it's a time of family right now. So just letting you know that with the energies that are playing out, if someone is acting weird or, you know, they're um, being very aggressive, they're not feeling, they're not themselves, know that um, it's all about the energies that are playing out. For some of you, if there has been no news and it's been fairly quiet, you've been like holding on for dear life, there are holdups. It's all about time. I mean, we've got Saturn and Pluto with the South Node there. That's not an easy process of, you know, letting go. It's a big deal. So that's why relationships are going through so much at this time. Relationships on all levels. So we have to be understanding with others and even with ourselves. It's energy that's going to pass. Right, well, mm -hmm. I was going to take two cards on the Queen of Swords. Heavy burdens, another ten. Heavy, heavy burdens. So nine of, uh, we've got the Nine of Wands and here we've got the Ten of Wands. And here we've got the Queen of Wands, which is, again, 
Leo Sagittarius. I'm going to say Aries as well. Now here, I believe that this is your energy being, you know, both two sides of you, dear Gemini, two sides of you. I think that you're, you know, you're holding, you're holding space for someone that you're wanting to match because I did say that you could be dealing with another fire sign, someone who's fiery, who probably has got strong water, and that's Pisces. You could be dealing with two different people, obviously. We've got Earth here as well, so we've got a few pentacles. So Earth and Air as well, Sun, Moon or Rising, but I feel that this is your energy and you're just your passionate side, your decisive side, your creative side is coming out at this time and you're just very ready, very ready to take action. You've been standing back, it's time to take action. You're at the Ten of Wands, okay? This is like the straw that broke the camel's back. And that's how the eclipse energy start to play out. People start to take action because emotionally it's like up, down, it's like a roller coaster at this time. And people tend to, when they've got a heavy burden, you've got the Ten of Wands twice. Be careful um, your thoughts that you share with others. Be careful that you don't lash out at others because I know you know, it's really, really tough to be patient. We've got two cards that fell out. We've got the full card and we've got the death card. So Scorpio and Aries. Aries is the seed. This is a brand new beginning. We've got the death card. This is just too much burden, obviously. Something is changing drastically. It's dying away. It's just been too hard to hold on to. So there is a new cycle that is beginning now. With Chiron, the wounded healer, in the sign of Aries, as I said, we are healing thyself and we are becoming again the warrior. So healing the mental, um, we're healing the um, wounded healer's psychological uh, issues. So any childhood conditioning or victim mentality is what's being healed here. Let's look at the hanging man. And we've got the eight of swords. There's more air. You're feeling tied, bound to a situation. And we've also got the ten of swords. Wow. But that turns into the ace. That's it. That's enough hardship. I've had enough. Gemini says, that's enough. That's enough. But just when you say, I can't do it anymore, what you don't know is that the new cycle is just around, just around the corner. Let's look at that four of wands. And we've got the three of, uh, did I say wands? <laughs> oh, that's a good one. Four of cups, something to do around family and your emotional self. And we've got the Three of Cups, so be careful. This could also speak of gossip. But if we put, you know, because we've got the Ace of Cups here, it's as though there's two threes here. And that would add up to the Six of Cups. Someone that you're dealing with from the past. Issues around children. Oh, and you finding your balance, obviously. And here we've got the Emperor. Wow, so someone who is an authority figure, someone who sits on a throne, someone that can take care of you. There's another four here. And this is Aries and Taurus. Now the emperor could be quite stern, quite strict. Um, there is fiery energy here. There's Aries, Taurus. And I'm going to say any fire sign. Let's take one more on the emperor. Because the Emperor, if he's not a person, he is Saturn. Whatever difficulties you've been working through, Saturn is giving you that Ace of Cups. So the hard work that you've done, because you've got Pluto here, which is the Death card, 
and you've got Saturnian energy here and they are obviously the two big players that are retrograde with Capricorn on the south node. Okay, so let's take one more and we've got the magician. You're pulling a rabbit out of a hat, I swear. You are finding your stability. You are communicating with this emperor. There is communication. Something's going to make you very, very happy. Now, could it be that this emperor, whoever this is in your life, and I would say more than likely, I would say that more than likely this emperor, because he's on top of this Ace of Cups, he's got strong water. The um, magician is also an, an ace, but it's also your ruling planet Mercury. That's why I feel that you can talk anyone into or out of anything, dear Gemini. But also I do feel that the Knight of Wands could be the same person as the Emperor because it's red, it's fiery, right? So let's take the Three of Coins. Now there is hidden passion in this Emperor. He shows up as quite cold and stern, but he is fiery. So, and the magician, the magician can be the trickster. Some of you may be fearing that this emperor is a trickster, but you can see through the veil, Merc um, sorry, Neptune has turned retrograde in Pisces. So the illusions are breaking down. Let's look at that three of coins. We've got the Page of Wands, so, you know, wanting to go on an adventure. This is a passionate, um, hot message that's coming through. It's coming through quickly. Again, Page of Wands could be a child. So whatever you're working on, whatever you're willing to take a risk on, is going to put you in a position to make a decision. Let's take a card on the Lovers. And we've got the Five of Swords, which is, wow, you're going to be torn by this decision. It's very hard, very hard indeed. Five of Swords is needing to win over all cost. And there's the air energy. I feel that Gemini is ready to, like, speak and, you know, dear Gemini, speak now or forever hold your peace. I think you're not going to be able to hold back. And this could get you into a bit of deep water, hot water. Let me take another card because, yes, you hold these swords. Usually we've got three people in this card. Yeah? Let's take a card. And we've got the five of coins. I think that Gemini is going to make a decision where someone, and we've got Earth here, five of pentacles, it's not going to be easy for you, not going to be easy for you. Um, I feel that Gemini is leaving behind, leaving Earth, an Earth sign behind Virgo, Taurus, Capricorn, because they, they are feeling left out already. Look at that. Now, Gemini, you're willing to win on all costs. You've got two fives here. Let me take one more. Maybe money issues, you know. Once you go through this, you could be finding yourself in, you know, hardship, financial hardship for whatever reason. But you've got to believe. You've got the Pisces card and I believe here. Some of you may not be believing in the divine the divine being behind behind you and that the wish that you've asked for coming in you're going to go through trials and tribulations let me take another card and here we've got the knight of cups so there is an offer coming through and the offer is very watery so we've got pisces here and um You know, any water element can be quite fluid. They can say one thing and do another. So I don't know how dependable they are. But the Pisces card again says, I believe. Let's take one on the Knight of Coins. 
and we've got the star card which is Aquarian energy and it's also you know that wish fulfillment it's looking to the future looking to the future with hope some of you with a star card this communication via the internet the star is also healing and hope now the star is an illuminary so you may you may um, get an indication of a wish fulfillment if it doesn't fully fully like show up you you're going to get the indication through communication let me take one more and you've got the faith card which is another five wow you have to believe though I do believe that this Taurian energy here is all about you know those prayers and affirmations have been look at the prayers here and it's all about answered prayer I do believe that it's going to be your prayers are going to be answered for you but you're having doubts about that now if you are dealing with a Taurian with Aquarius there it looks like they're I don't know something to do with because of the um, the horses that are running wild I think that if if you're dealing with someone who you could not break in let's say you know metaphorically I mean like get them to do what is the right thing um, you may be running wild running away you know running away running towards what you believe let me take I'd like to take actually and I haven't done this I want to take one card on the Knight of Wands first of all which is the general energy I think uh, Gemini may be breaking traditions at this time and they get they're turning more spiritual than you know intellectual and logical let's see the knight of wands and the knight of wands has the page of cups which is pisces there is an apology there is also an offer coming through could be either or either what i'm going to do is i'm going to take one or two cards from this deck here which is the tarot of dreams i want to see one card on each of the knights because i feel that these are the two energies that are playing around in your life I need more clarity so let's take the Knight of Pentacles first of all and I just want to say that Aquarius is is usually you know part of a group an association they're very humanitarian they're very progressive in what they do if we're talking about Taurus Aquarius here um they could be because Aquarius is not very emotional where love is concerned they are very um, eccentric and they're very futuristic where technology is concerned ideas they're quite ingenious as well but they're not very they're not very open emotionally so let's take another card and we've got the tower so this for me is Uranus right on top of Aquarius this is the tower that's bringing in the shift and the change and many say that the tower is Scorpio and Pluto so I'm going to leave it at that it looks like something is being changed the divine is changing maybe even a marriage some of you may be leaving a committed partnership or even a marriage let's take this knight of wands the, which has the page of cups and the knight of wands as I said it's the general energy so here we are oh wow Sagittarius the wheel of fortune is sitting right on top of the knight of wands it's time to take action you are trusting in what you believe in you are trusting that the there are changes ahead of you and you need to keep the faith now 
Sagittarius again. Your beliefs, spirituality, foreigners, and the vision for the future. Let's take one card on the Emperor. I do believe that the Emperor is more than likely the um, Knight of Wands. Let's take another card. And we've got the Nine of Swords. I do believe that there is a lot of worry in your head. There is a lot of worry from this Emperor as well. Nine of Swords is like a nightmare. Nine of Swords is like fears. Some of you are really fearing a situation here. Um, fearing a person that is of authority. Fearing things to do with the law. Let's take one more. And here we've got the Palace of Swords. So many swords, so many conversations. So much air energy here. Let me take a couple of Sabilas, dear Gemini. Now, for those of you that are single, I do believe that Pisces, for some of you, it's going to be Pisces. We've got Taurus here. We've got Scorpio. We've got Aquarius. Um, I do believe mo more than likely if it's an, air, uh, an earth sign, we're talking about Virgo or Taurus. Um, if we're talking about water, it's Pisces. And we've also got Sagittarius very strong. And I'm going to throw Leo in. No, we've got the full card as well. So Aries could be any any fire sign. Let's look at the Karma Dharma position. Actually, I'm going to take one card on this Five of Wands. One Sibila here. And you have the Domestic or number 11, which is very karmic. The uh, Butler is Lack of Trust. You know, this is supposed to be someone who is helping, but it's um, this person is out for, for their own gain. It'd be nice if I could pick up the cards. Look at the similarity. He's even dressed like a butler. Yeah. This is the outsider. This is lack of trust. Okay. It's very, very karmic what is going on here. Trust issues. Let me take one on the Ten of Wands, which is so much better energy than the Five. Why? Because these two people are there together, right? Here we've got the Donna di Servizio, which is um, very Virgo-ish energy. It's the Three of Pentacles again, but it's also a lot of help. This is help, a helping hand. This is being of service to others. This, you know, and Virgo is someone who does serve others. So this is a helping hand, I'm going to say. Some of you could even be dealing with a Virgo that is there for you. This could be a servant, someone who's at your beck and call. Let's take the, the tower. Okay, so the first Sibylla flipped. I'm going to, I saw it, it was the Bambino, so something new, something new, even uh, this could circulate around children, reunion, la reunion, so there is a meeting, a reunion happening suddenly, unexpectedly, and here we've got the newness, the Virgo energy again, the, um, this is the Giovina Fanciulla, the, this is pure, the reunion there needs to be trust here, fully fully trusting each other. If this is someone from the past, I've already said these six of cups could be talking about your past. Mercury is turning retrograde. The 12, which is the hanging man, turns into a three. So could we be talking about... Could we be talking about... Because, you know... The La Reunion is the Eight of Wands. So this is could be someone that's traveling to come and see you. This could be someone who is a foreigner who is traveling. And this is divinely guided. 
it could happen like in three days or three weeks I'm saying at the most it's going to be three months but I don't think so let's take I'd like to take on the wheel of fortune over the knight of wands and the page of cups and we have the Gran Signore, this is number 13, this is the King of Hearts, this is someone who is quite, you know, um, strong where their finances are concerned, this is a VIP, someone who is quite special, something around very noble and also it's a number 13, 13 again is very transformative it's Scorpio energy we've also got the Casa which is the two of cups and this is an agreement some sort of a contract and we've got the news is coming through now the changes are that there is going to be an agreement there is going to be an agreement with this um, Knight of Wands And you know that the lettera, the uh, lettera can also be legal documents. Something around a foundation, um, because the casa is the home, right? Let's take one more. And we've got the morte, there you go. Morte is death and transformation. And we've got the omaggio di preziosi. So the change, whatever it's going to be, Whatever the transformation, it's bringing you gifts. Now, this can be a literal gift, um, dear, dear Gemini. It can be a literal gift, but it can also be metaphorical that you're being given a gift for all the hard work, all the patience that you've put up with, Gemini's. Let's take one card on this position of now. So four of cups and three of cups. Four and three, seven of cups. Again, seven of cups is things up in the air. There's the five of cups and the ace of wands. Remember I said looking at the glass half empty rather than half full. You've got the ace of wands here. So this is the light. This is the passion. This is the new beginning. What I'd like to do is just take, going to take one for the outcome here and that will be your reading. I think it's long enough. Your prayers will be answered, but it's not going to be easy. It's going to be quite... quite frustrating and very tense. Okay. And you've got the sun, Leo, the heart. This is the heart. The offer that comes through... Okay, the Knight of Wands that I said could be Sagittarian, could be Leo. This is true love. The offer that comes through, you can trust it fully. The son is also children, but look at him. He's holding all, he's doing the impossible. He's holding all these planets up. The sun, as you can see here, this is obviously Zeus, power. And Zeus, of course, is Jupiter again, so... Dear Gemini, I'm wishing you all the best. I do hope that this resonated for you and that it was helpful. Thank you again so much for your subscribes, your shares, all that. Sending you lots of love. Happy eclipse to all of you. Bye-bye.